Hey, Marcus Conti reporting. I got an interesting story. I don't know if you guys remember this. From 2016, Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos. 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 <laughs> right? The remember the blood sampling? Remember the hot the hot chick with the the blonde hair and the fucking turtleneck, man? We're gonna we're gonna check her out, man. Check this shit out first. Remember this guy? Remember Judy Kramer? Gotta go back to 2016. Exciting privately held companies in Silicon Valley has come under fire. I'm talking about Theranos. That's the diagnostics company with the ultra fast finger prick blood te testing technology that's aiming to upend the entire traditional healthcare establishment by making it easier, less expensive, and much less uncomfortable for you to get tested for a whole range of conditions. For the last few years, Theranos has been viewed as a revolutionary company. Its CEO has been uh, powerless as next Steve Jobs. Company has been valued as much as $9 billion in its most recent round of fundraising. But Theranos also has its critics, and just this morning, the Wall Street Journal ran a pretty scathing article about the company, alleging that the company's proprietary testing devices may be inaccurate, and basically accusing Theranos of deceptive practices. The journal cites a former employee who claimed that of the 240 tests offered by Theranos, only 15 are actually performed on the company's proprietary Edison diagnostic machine, the vast majority of the rest being done on traditional lab equipment. The article was pretty brutal, but Hero Mad Money, we know something. We know that there are two sides to every single story, which is what... So I'm going to I'll play the rest of it in a second. I just want to I just wanted to give you a little background on, on what's going on. So that's Jim Cramer back in, I believe, 2015 on Mad Money. Remember Jim Cramer? That guy used to throw. Uh, he, he was like a crazy trader. And he used to like his his secretaries would have to have extra uh, uh, keyboards and extra uh, monitors in his office because he would smash everything. And then they'd have to come in and replace them. Guy was crazy, man. Crazy uh, guy. So anyway, Elizabeth Holmes, right? We're gonna hear her voice. I don't want you. I don't want to give it away. I'm gonna. I wanted to tell you more about the story, and then uh, we'll hear. We'll hear her voice. She has a very disguised voice, and she was known. She was known for disguising her voice right down here. But meanwhile, she had a very high voice like this. It's pretty cool, man. So we'll hear. We'll hear her speak. So who is Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos? Nineteen years old, she she was a, a Stanford dropout, and uh, she put together a company in her dorm room and became the youngest billionaire with a company worth nine billion dollars. She's been known to fly around on a six point five million dollar Gulfstream Learjet. Wow, the American dream! Wow, she's young, successful, pretty, flying around on a Learjet. Right. That shit is crazy, man. Right. So, um, so what? What is it? What? Why does it matter now? <laughs> because it was a scam. It was a ripoff, right? They were selling this this blood sampling device that were uh, in Walmart, and and apparently they were able to, uh, they were able to. They claimed that two little prick, two little dots of blood were the equivalent of uh, vials and vials of uh, intravenous blood. And she was told all along, all the all the, the scientists know that that's it's impossible to draw those kind of results. And she was saying you could diagnose disease and, and all kinds of stuff. So they got in really deep with this, right? And uh, it turns out that it's a it, it appears to be a scam. Right? So so and why is it important right now? Pow, June fifteenth, two thousand eighteen. Following an investigation by U.S. Attorney's Office in San Francisco that lasted more than two years, a federal grand jury indicted Holmes and former Theranos COO uh, and President, uh, what's his name, Ramesh Sunny Balwani on nine counts of wire fraud and two counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. Prosecutors alleged that Holmes and Bal Balwani engaged in two criminal schemes one to defraud investors the other to defraud doctors and patients see that's why it's ugly because they're selling uh, a product that uh, allegedly can diagnose disease and or not diagnose disease not catch it All right so here they are scamming away selling a product in walmart for 2.99 right and who's the target it's poor people right why don't you just go to the doctor and draw some blood? What are you, you're afraid of needles? Come on, that's bullshit, right? Go to the doctor, right? You can't go to the doctor? Why? Oh, because you, you got no insurance, right? That's that, So they targeted 299 people in Walmart, and they, they netted $9 billion. But they got screwed, and I'm going to tell you why they got screwed. There's, there's something breaking in the way I'm going to, what I'm going to tell you that I don't think anybody else is 
notice, and I'm going to I'm going to tell you about it. Right? Who one of the major investors were? So the case is proceeding in the U.S. District Court in San Jose. Holmes and Baldwin have pleaded not guilty, not guilty. Right? Thornis grabbed headlines and funded ten year and funding. 10 years ago by claiming it could perform a full range of clinical tests using tiny blood samples drawn from a single finger stick. Prosecutors allege that Holmes and Baldwin knew their device had accuracy and speed issues. Right. I'll read a little more. Let's talk about the investment part of it because this is the most uh, interesting part. Right? So they allegedly, Thornos, the blood testing company on its way to, is now on its way to liquidation caused several high-profile investors to lose more than $600 million, according to the Wall Street uh, Journal. Now, it's a, it was a privately traded company, so they're not under the same rules, per se, as, uh, as a publicly traded company. There's no shareholders. It's just a, a bunch of billionaires that pool their money together and get the thing off the ground, and it remains... Uh, uh, they, they have a, a interest, a financial interest in the company, but not in the sense of a shareholder... Uh, uh, relationship. So documents unsealed in the lawsuit brought against Theranos reveal a number of high-profile investors who had a stake in nearly in nearly worthless in the nearly worthless startup. Now this is going to blow you away. Check this out. The Waltons, right? Remember they were selling this piece of crap in in Walmart for two ninety nine, had a hundred and fifty million dollars invested in the company. Rupert Murdoch. 125 million invested. Now here's the big one. The lawsuit was was filed in um, June, right? You remember Betsy DeVos? Betsy DeVos. I'm working right now. Don't cry. Betsy DeVos, right? Family, including she's now the uh, education secretary, right? Under Trump, right? She invested a hundred million dollars. Right, so, so in in May, right, Betsy DeVos gets gets appointed as a secretary, a high official in the Trump administration, and then she goes after fucking these the girl who stole hundred million dollars from her. Is that coincidence? <laughs> I don't think so, man. You piss off the wrong people. Uh, come here, come here. This is an old cat. I'm not being mean to her. She's just very old. She's 17, and she's starting to lose her mind. So I gotta just, I just gotta, I gotta be nice. The investments were made between 2013 and 2015. She's deaf too. She can't hear. That's why she's crying. She cries because she can't hear anybody. Right? Uh, anyway, we're all gonna go sometime, right? So um, I'll give you more of the cat than less of me. Anyway, on March 14, 2018, Holmes settled. This is this is more more evidence of corruption. On March 14th, uh, I'm going to play the, that that video, the end of it, so you hear her voice because that's that's really exciting. On March 14th, uh, Holmes settled a, a SEC lawsuit. The claimed charges of uh, fraud include claiming the company's false claim that its technology was being used by the U.S. Department of Defense in combat situations. They made that shit up. The company also lied when it claimed to have $100 million in revenue in 2014. That year, the company only made 100000 She added three zeros to the revenue stream. And what is the big picture? I'm, I'm going to talk about the big picture at the end because the big picture is how many of these companies are out there? Uh, a lot of them, right? Remember Bernie Madoff, the Ponzi scheme? He, was taking, he, had, he started a mutual fund. And there was no stocks. There was nothing. You just give them the money, and you get a piece of paper that says you have some stocks. All right, that's what this shit is, man. But this is this went a little overboard because it, it again it involves people's health, right? And and you know and it's it, it's pretty it's pretty serious, right? The terms of the settlement include surrendering. So she 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 surrendered control of the company, and she's banned from holding office and. And for 10 years, and a whopping $500,000 fine. So she, she's, she's worth $4 billion. She stole 
eight billion dollars, right? Eight billion dollar market cap. She, herself is worth four billion, and she paid a half a million in a fine. The SEC. That's it. Done. Right? So the SEC's added added a picture, right? That's usually how it goes. But, but because she fucked over Betsy DeVos and and the Waltons, and Betsy DeVos now has some power, they're uh, they're leaning into her. Right, so I'm going to put all the links down below. If you want to read the articles more, there's Vanity Fair, there's uh, CNBC, there's uh, Reuters. These are all, all the There's three articles that I'm reading from. Right, um, so what else? The company had 800 employees in 2015. <laughs> doing what? <laughs> what were they doing? Right, so um, Holmes had learned a lot from Steve Jobs. Holmes paid uh, extreme attention to our company's story. Its narrative, Thornos, was not simply endeavoring to make a product that sold off the shelves and lined the investors' pockets. Rather, it was attempting something far more poignant. In interviews, Holmes reiterated that Theranos' uh, prioritary technology could take a, take a pinprick worth of blood, extract from the tip of a finger, instead of intravenously. The te and test for hundreds of diseases, a remarkable innovation that was going to save millions of lives. And in a phrase she often repeated, change the world. Holmes adorned the covers of Fortune, Fortune, Forbes, blah, blah, blah. She was, f she was uh, profiled in the New Yorker and featured on Charlie Rose. Worth 400 billion, uh, 4 billion. I had my own zeros. So uh, we saw the Jim Cramer thing, right? And you're going to hear her say it. Uh, first they think you're crazy. Then they fight you. And then, all of a sudden, you change the world. Uh, that's, that's a Ralph Nader twist. You know, Ralph Nader said that? Fucking, that's just, and she, she runs with it. She just, you know, it's selling the narrative, selling the story. That's what Wall Street really is. It's about selling stories. I mean, I remember a story. We, I, I was in a, a stockbroker and these brokers were selling this this uh, horizontal drilling company, right? It's the story, right? Is the underlying equity, did they actually do what they said they can do? Who knows? Nobody fucking knows. Nobody cares, right? All they know is the story, and they pitch the story on the phone to these stupid investors that think that they're, they're getting in on something on the ground floor. That's what this is, right? So um, what else? When she first came up with the, oh, this is the doctors. This is interesting. When she first came up with the idea of Theranos, which eventually aimed to reap vast amounts of data from a few uh, droplets of blood derived from a tip of a finger, she approached several of her professors at Stanford. She only lasted at Stanford for a year, and she quit. According to someone who knew Holmes back then, but most let's let's before we do that let's listen to let's listen to this chick's voice man this is crazy it's spooky it's important okay. that we speak to elizabeth holmes I the founder is. and ceo of theranos so. who's coming to us this afternoon from boston where boston. she's attending a meeting of the board of fellows at harvard medical school to give her a chance to answer the charges raised in the article Ms. holmes welcome back to mad money it's great to be here thank you Ooh, thank you so elizabeth hard. i have to tell you in all my years i can't recall a private company that i have to candidly many have never heard of getting this kind of attention and scrutiny. What do you think's going on here? Well, this is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. And um, <laughs> I, I have to say, I, I, I personally was shocked to see that the journal would publish something like this when we had sent them over a thousand pages of documentation demonstrating that the statements in their piece were false, but um, but we're doing things differently, and we're working to make a difference, and that means people raise questions, and and that's okay. Yeah, uh, but in this case, it was pretty disappointing to see that after every single one of the sources that we spoke with, who the journal had contacted, told us that the statements that were being attributed to them were false or misleading, and the only sources who were left were ones who wouldn't speak with us, who on their own website say that they now do business with LabCorp in their office or in the other case demanded in writing that we pay them in cash so I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's just it's just very them. it's very repetitive but you get to hear her voice isn't it sexy she talks down here 
Her voice is probably up in this octave right here. Hi, I'm, you know... Well, she talks, she drops her voice down here and says everything with such conviction. She's got the, the Steve Jobs turtleneck, black turtleneck on. It's a real, real, you know, a whole show, the whole narrative. She's selling the package. So back to this uh, professor, right? So, so now you've heard the woman. You see how she's coming out defending herself, right? That was right after the Wall Street Journal uh, article. Uh, an article came out and blew them up, whatever, right? So, so, um, so most, uh, but mo must explain to the, oh, yeah. So she, she was in Stanford trying to sell this to, pro to her professors. Most explained to the chemical engineer major, she was a chemical engineer major, that it, it was virtually impossible to do so with any real ef efficiency, right? Right? So, uh, oh, the other thing I forgot to show you is the, uh, here's the, uh, the actual machines, right? <laughs> These are the black boxes. This is this is the machine that she claims that all of the shit was done in, right? These are uh, I don't know what they're called. I forgot what they're called. But there's something, right? They're uh, they're machines, right? And this is how you put the blood sample in there. This is the secretive, the secret black box, right? Where all the information comes out. And it turns out, like of course, very few. If anything came out, they were diluting it with water. It was a scam. Right? The whole thing was a scam. I see my, I see my uh, okay, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Casper. Okay, I know everything's backwards when I look in the camera. It's Casper. Casper the Friendly Ghost. Friendliest ghost you know. All right, so um, I told her, I don't think your idea is going to work. <laughs> Phyllis Gardner, a professor of medicine at Stanford, said to me, about Holmes's semi-pitch for Theranos. A gar as Gardner explained, it is impossible to get a precise result from the tip of a finger from most of the tests that Theranos uh, would claim to conduct accurately. When a finger is pricked, the probe breaks up cells, allowing the breeze, among other things, to escape into the in interstitial fluid. While it is feasible to test for pathogens this way, a finger prick is too unreliable to, to obtain more nuisanced readings. Right, so she knew. And right, now she's gonna go into uh she's gonna go into federal court and try to get out of it, right? So what is the moral of the story? Right? The moral of the story is you could sell see, to the dumb investors under this this system of venture capital. It, it's and people always want oh no regulation. Well, this is this is what you get with no regulation because this is only one of probably thousands of phony companies out there, right? I bet if you walk down, you know, the aisles of Walmart and you go into the medical areas and all these cough medicines, I don't take any of that shit, man. I don't. I, I'm. I'd rather be sick for a while and start swallowing all kinds of shit, right? It, all these medications and foot powders and ball powders and un, all these things, right, that claim to do all kinds of stuff that people just believe, right? You just believe it, right? And and that's the that that's the that's the tragedy of the story. There's a tragedy in there. I don't know if I'm putting my finger on the exact tragedy, but there is a there is a scam and a rip a ripoff evident in our economy. Right. And what what propels it? Right? It's a, just a it's a kid. It's actually a success story until you get caught cheating. I think that that's the story, really. Right. That you could you know, she was a, a young kid, a young Stanford person. Right. And and uh, and and she had this idea and she was the darling of Silicon Valley. Right. And then she got caught. And, and then and, and, you know, and everybody focused on the driving around and you know, flying around in planes by herself and, 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 and the, 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 the lap of luxury. She had made it, right? But meanwhile, she's ripping off, we, they overlooked, even the, the investors, someone like Betsy DeVal, Baus, and, and, and Walmart fame and billions, overlooked the fact that it was a scam and a ripoff, that any simple professor in a college could tell you that it's, it's impossible what they're claiming to do. Right. So fascinating story. We'll see what happens in court. My my uh, my guesstimation is that um, they're going to make an example out of her. They're going to uh, she'll probably it'll probably be another uh, Martha Stewart. They'll drag her up the steps of federal court. 
Lock her up for six months. Marcus Conti reporting.